Howdy, Ekin, hello, H2O's, Roller Bros, and Fireworker HD's alike. It's been a little bit since I made a video, and it feels good to be back. Today, we're diving straight into the center of dating hell, and I'm really excited to share these stories with you. All right, this one sounds like we're getting off to a delightful start. Widower of one month expects me to be his new girlfriend without asking me. This one is a doozy and 100% real. Around three years ago, I was casual acquaintances with a guy who was friends with some of my friends. We had met once years ago, but I don't recall it. We were Facebook friends, though. Our circles intertwined in two separate social circles. We will call him Stan. Stan's wife was in poor health and had been in a long fight with breast cancer. I saw his post always talking about how much he loved her and how happy they were despite her poor prognosis. I had been in a relationship with a guy where I fell fast and hard. I thought this guy was the one. After years of loneliness and crappy dates, he made me immeasurably happy for the short time we were together. I'd bought tickets to see one of my favorite bands in multiple cities. He got us plane tickets and we were planning a fun weekend away in a few months. As life happens, Stan's wife lost her battle. Stan was devastated. He posted on Facebook constantly saying how much he missed her, and it was sad to see someone so heartbroken. His wife and best friend of 12 years was gone. Around three weeks later, my dream guy suddenly broke up with me. He had completely destroyed me and I was left crushed. I was left to try and move on and had those concert tickets as a reminder of what I'd lost. I gave my cousin the tickets to the concert in the out-of-state city. I had four tickets to two upcoming shows for the same band in a city three hours away and posted on Facebook that I was looking for someone to go with me my treat. Stan messages me on Facebook to let me know that he'd be interested in going and he would pay for the hotel hotel and we could go as friends, no pressure. We had other friends going too and this band had a large following and they'd do this every year. I agreed and figured we could bond over our losses. Stan told me that I had nothing to worry about and he was a nice guy and blah blah blah. He even had a mutual friend call me to vouch for him. I told the friend no worries as we weren't totally alone and it was just as friends, no need to vouch, or so I thought. That's so weird. I would never think that like if I'm going to hang out with somebody even if I'm going to go on a date with somebody that I'd need a friend to call and vouch for this is strange one month after Stan's wife died and one week after my boyfriend dumped me Stan and I hung out at my house I had offered because I didn't want him to mope around on a milestone day plus it would be good as a practice run before our concert trip we hung out and watched Deadpool in the scene where Deadpool's face is burned by fire, Stan asked would you still love me if that happened to me. Slightly panicked and quickly thinking, I responded if that happened to anyone I cared about I would still love them. I was starting to worry. I decided to cut him a break because he was heartbroken. I tried to maintain that I was just looking to be friends. A few days later Stan met up with me at a waterfront bar slash restaurant to watch a mutual friend also going to the concert, play some music and sing. Stan had remarked something about, I'm great now that I have OP in my life, crap. Maybe I just mean a lot to him as a friend? Crap, I need to set him straight. A day or so later via phone call, Stan and I are discussing our expectations for our relationship. Stan basically says that he watched his wife slowly die for 10 years and it's his turn for him to move on and be happy and I'm the one that he thinks he wants to be happy with. Me, the girl he hung out with twice, the girl who thinks we were just friends, the girl who was freshly heartbroken. I, as kindly and clearly as possible, explain to Stan that we've only hung out twice and I'm still heartbroken after being dumped a week ago and that he needs to spend some time soul searching as his wife only died a month ago. Stan isn't having any of it, so I have to tell Stan in no uncertain terms that I am not ready for a relationship, he isn't ready, and that we are only friends and we will stay only friends. Stan gets angry at me because he doesn't want to be just friends. I even clarified that he was saying that he didn't want to be my friend if he couldn't be in a relationship with me. Stan proceeds to tell me he will cancel the hotel reservation for the upcoming concert and then blocks me on social media. I'm left questioning his sanity and thinking, what in the actual hell? I never saw or heard from Stan again, and it took me eight months longer to get over my breakup. Stan was seen with a new GF at a party a few weeks later. 
Nuclear bomb deactivated. <laughs> yes, you definitely dodged a bullet there. Oh my god. I mean, it's clear that Stan is just actively grieving and he wants to replace his wife very quickly so that he doesn't feel that emptiness that he's most likely feeling. But, like, I can only hope that either him and his new GF live happily ever after or they both split up amicably when maybe he realizes she isn't his wife or she realizes she's being used for a rebound. <laughs> Right, this one spoils itself in the title, but I'm only going to half spoil it for you by reading half of the title. The guy gets so mad that I refuse to see him anymore that he makes very detailed threats to end his own life. The title is basically my TLDR. This story is by far my most unsettling. Two years ago, I matched with a guy who will call Chris on OkCupid okay who offered that we go out. Then he noticed that I hadn't hit drinking age yet and told me, yeah, this won't work and blocked me. Six months later, Later, I guess he made a new account, he matched with me again. I brought up his previous refusal to date a girl who couldn't drink, and he apologized and asked if we could get coffee. I went to Chris's designated coffee shop. He was about an hour late, but he definitely made up for it with his apologies and how great of a conversationalist he was. We agreed to go on a second date. I don't remember all the details of our second date, but I do remember we ended the night with walking in a park and sharing music. It sounded very romantic, but something about him was unsettling. After the second date, a few days later, he asked if our third date, we could spend the night together. Specifically, he wanted to spend the night in my apartment. I said no because I was uncomfortable with that. He offered to just get dinner then. He wanted me to meet him in an Applebee's 45 minutes away at 11 p.m. Okay, I guess he worked late that night. I go there and now I'm sure that my gut feeling about something being off was right. At the end of the night, he told me I was wifey material and tried to kiss me, but I got away from him and went home. Once I was safely home, I texted him how I felt and that I didn't want to keep seeing him. At first, his text showed heartbreak. He went on and on about how he thought thought I was special. Then it flipped. He started saying things like, you're not wifey material after all, you're just a thought. And then he threatened to kill himself. I panicked, I tried calling him, no answer. He kept sending detailed texts about how he was going to do it, which I won't describe here. I begged him not to and asked where he was. He said, if you want to stop me, you can meet me where I'm going to do it. Then sent an address for a Walgreens around an hour and 20 minutes away. He said, you have one hour to get here. I told him it was over an hour away. Please be patient. His response was 59 minutes left. What I actually did was call the police to good on you there and told them what was going on. I gave the location, Chris's phone number, and his full name. They sent a car to that Walgreens, but there was no car in the parking lot, and the staff hadn't seen anyone. The police called me back and asked if I was sure I had his information correct. I told them no, and I don't even know his address. They told me they looked up his phone number, but it didn't match with Chris Williams. It matched with Chris Anderson, and they were going to send a car to his listed address. In the meantime, they were sending an officer to my apartment to question me. The officer arrived and basically just took down my info and looked at the messages to see if I was legit. I remember the officer commenting on how messed up the demands and the time countdown were. Then the officer left. I started getting more messages from Chris. What did you do? Did you talk to the cops? My brother told me cops were at my house looking for me. When I didn't respond, he got angrier. I'm really going to kill myself, but before I do, I'm going to record a video saying you made me do it and send it to your college. You'll never be able to get a teaching job. While he was ranting, I looked up his real name on Facebook. Turns out he has a girlfriend of two years. I texted him back and said, you're at your girlfriend's place, aren't you? He didn't respond for a bit, and I took that as a yes. I called the cops again with the new details. I guess while they were on their way, Chris realized what was about to happen, and that he'd be discovered for cheating, because he texted me and said, don't bother telling her. She already knows and has forgiven me. Right. I didn't hear anything else all night. The next morning, I called the police station and asked if he was found alive. They said yes, and Baker acted him a mandatory admittance to a psych ward. I found his girlfriend on Facebook and messaged her. I sent her pics of his dating profile, his request to spend the night with me, everything. I never got a response, but I'm guessing she saw, because guess who I got a call from the same day? Nope, not his girlfriend, his mother. 
His mother ranted on and on about how Chris is such a nice young man and how could I lie to the police to get him in trouble like that. I calmly tried to interject and explain what was going on. She wasn't having it. She had decided that I was the devil for ruining her poor baby's relationship while simultaneously begging me to give him another chance. Like, was she really condoning his cheating? I told her that she was as psychotic as her son, that they both need help, and that if either one of them contacted me again, I'd be filing for a restraining order. I never heard from either of them again. This is just another one of those situations where I really feel as though he was only using the suicide card to, like, manipulate her into being with him, but I can't say that for sure, but what I can say for sure is that if you've gone on three dates with somebody and they threaten to end their own life because you won't go on another date with them or you don't want to see them again, that is your, it's not your responsibility to take that any more seriously than just calling the police and having them take care of it. It's not your fault whatsoever. Like, if they do actually end up ending their own life because you wouldn't go on a third date with them, they were going to do that anyway, regardless of what you did. Like, this is not your fault in any way, shape, or form. Like, I wholeheartedly believe in taking this stuff seriously, but it's not your responsibility to ruin your own life in order to attempt to save someone you barely know. Just call the cops and try to let them deal with it. Hey, if you want to see some dumb pictures of me, my cats, and some exclusive pictures of me having gone to the beach for the first time in a long time and getting a horrible sunburn as a result, come check me out on Instagram, at QStarVideos. That's the same at as I have on Twitter. You can also find me at Twitch, twitch.tv slash your Q is in the queue that belongs to you. And uh, yeah, skate on the best of your abilities, guys. Make sure you're drinking more water. I'll see you very soon. I hope you're doing well out there. Stay safe.